Today we are going on an adventure. We are going to visit today the town of Sao Bartolomeo de Mecinas. I never heard of this town before. Yesterday when I was just scrolling the internet, the Facebook groups and someone on an expat British group asked a question, how is life in Sao Bartolomeo de Mecinas? And I thought, what a good idea, let's go tomorrow and see what is about this town, if there are things to do there, if the English is spoken throughout the shops or, you know, at the theater. These were questions that I found about this town on this group. And let's go see how it's life in this uh, little Portuguese town. This town uh, is not on the coast, it's a little uh, inland, like an hour from uh, where I am right now in Val do Lobo, like 45 minutes because we are not going to take the highway. We are going to take an alternative route and I'm curious about the road, if it's hard, if it's through the mountains, we will see about that. And also I want to see the houses, I want to see the real estate market, maybe I find a little real estate agency and I see some prices. It's an adventure guys! I think today is going to be wonderful. Let's go! Road trip! Don't you just love when you do spontaneous things and you, you just get up in the car and go explore this beautiful country? And like I said, we don't know what we are going to find. We don't know anything about this uh, town. We didn't do research or anything. And we are just excited as you are. I hope you are. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my nightmares. Sitting right Silhouettes of you are like a taunt Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more, even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through I got issues in Sao Bartolomeo de Mecinas I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it well So uh, don't come for me <laughs> I'm doing my best here with the Portuguese This seems to be the central road The main place in the town where people gather I think we have down the road a square, a market the municipal market I think it's still open so we are going to visit that and we are just going to go and see what, uh, what we can find here So the market was rather slow, it's a municipal market and but it has all that you need, you have your typical fruits, you have the fish and uh, it's a place of gathering for the people. I don't know if you saw but uh, in, the, in the front of the market there were a lot of people just gathering and talking and debating problems. I think uh, this uh, custom was preserved uh, through the years, just uh, come at the market and uh, encounter your neighbors and talk about uh, things, you know, <laughs> debate the problems of the city. And you know what I observed immediately here is that everyone is wearing masks just because we are near a place of gathering and where there are a lot of people. Um, the people are all wearing masks and this is why I um, also have my masks here. I don't want to, to disturb the rules of the town, especially when people are just respecting, respecting the rules and try to, to take care of. And I cannot enforce enough how safe this country is and how the Portuguese people are respecting and taking care of the rules even if we are in, uh, in the air, you know, we are outside but still because people feel that they should wear the mask they do because there are here 
a lot of people, more people than usual. So, I don't know, this is mind-blowing for me, in a good way. I'm totally 100% supporting that and want to be like them, with the mask. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Portuguese uh, towns, a uh, central uh, square, but then it has these beautiful winding streets you can barely get with a car here. And the town is spread on the hills, and you have all these winding streets paved with uh, this kind of rock. And of course the recommendation is always to go and explore those winding streets and to discover the city. And we are now in the square or Lago de São Sebastião and here you have this wonderful, wonderful church, chapel. It's closed now but it's very, very beautiful. And also what I like to admire here are the beautiful houses and the, the people that are living here and the flowers such beautiful flowers all over just looking at the houses they are beautifully maintained although they are very very rustic and I think this is the beauty of these towns because they kept the houses like they were back in the days but they uh, try to preserve it and renovate them in the old way so we as tourists can uh, come here and understand more about their culture so this is actually a road and you can walk through here and go to the other side on the other road i just came from uh, from there very interesting and beautiful i never seen uh, something like this before i think it's a little dangerous i wouldn't uh, adventure myself on this road but just to look at it's very beautiful and do you know what else i like to do in uh, towns like this just listen to the nature in the silence Today, toolbox of possible measures that countries could adopt to relieve citizens at a time when electricity and gas prices are reaching record highs. A community source said so far, 15 member states have said they are taking or planning action. Among the countries that have adopted measures are Portugal, Spain, Greece, France, Italy, and Slovenia. You've been on my mind for a minute, but now you This is the Igreja Matriz of San Bartolomeo de Messines. Its construction dates back to the first quarter of the 16th century. What attracts me the more to it is the facade, which has a magnificent porch and presents an unmistakable scenic effect, as you can see, due to the combination of different materials like lime and sandstone, which were brought here from Silves. On the right side, we have the four-eyed bell tower, with an arch rim and covered with a round dome. We cannot see inside right now, but inside the Baroque is very much evident in the gilded wood cavings and altar pieces, which uh, you have to come in Portugal to see for yourself. The church and churchyard underwent an intense refurbishing during the 1960s. And this is what I like about the Portuguese people, that they preserve, refurbish everything. And right next to the Igreja Matriz, we have Casa Museu de João do Deus, which I understand it was a poet. Right now the museum is closed due to the restriction for the COVID, but um, if you had the chance and come here, you absolutely must visit the house. As I understand, João de Deus was a poet and this museum was uh, made in order to remember him. 
from a triple perspective as a man as a poet but also as a teacher they also have an app and you can download this app and learn more about uh, this museum and about Rota da Laranja uh, I understand that this is the road of the oranges and you can find out more about this in the app and another interesting feature is that this Rota de Laranja is an augmented reality Wow, it sounds very fancy. Maybe I will download the app and find out more. And right next to this house is this beautiful archway and Uado Aiko and you absolutely must visit this street. It's so white and renovated and it's beautiful architecture. They also have a cinema here and it seems like they have pretty new movies like Dune for example or something for Halloween or um, a movie for kids. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you have a cinema here and they have good shows. We are just wandering right now aimlessly through the town. We want to see if we discover uh, places, if there are other places here to visit and maybe a restaurant for a coffee or maybe even something to eat. So we discovered what they called Parque da Merenda which is a place like this with tables and chairs where you can uh, sit and uh, enjoy your lunch in open air. They seem to be very keen on these kind of places and I encountered this Parque da Merenda in almost every town that we visited. Which is actually a very good idea to encourage people to come and sit in open air and have the lunch. And I think that is the train station. Uh, I don't know how we are going to get there, but we are going to get there. It's very interesting that this town has the train station right in the town. So from the center town up until here, we walk like five minutes, which is very, very nice to have the train station right here and be able to visit not only by car, but by train. Because to rent a car in Algarve, it's pretty, pretty very expensive people watch the videos about me renting cars in Agarve if you don't know what I mean so walking now in order to find the train station we are kind of at the edge of the town the town is right there the center of the town is right there So we found the train station, this is it. It seems to be this station, uh, which is named uh, Messines Alte, uh, seems to be on the main line Faro to Lisbon. We came with the uh, Alfa Pendular, so we didn't have a stop here. So this is why uh, we didn't uh, recognize it in the first time. Actually, when I first saw this train station, it reminded me a little bit about uh, Bolekim if you didn't see the video but about Boli, Bolikem, Bolikim, <laughs> uh, please go and uh, watch because the Bolikem has a wonderful, very beautiful station. It's a point of attraction in itself. And uh, this uh, train station reminded me a little bit about that. Why? Because it has these uh, beautiful um, doors that are uh, painted very beautifully and it has this azulejos which also is very beautiful and you find these azulejos in every station in Portugal well I don't know if it's in any station but in all the stations that I visited so all in all yeah it's a um, it's it, it's a small station so I cannot say that uh, it's an attraction in itself like it's uh, at Bolekim but it's okay uh, also, you can come here by foot from the town. It's not a very pleasant road. If, uh, it's a main road right there. You can uh, come here with a car. We didn't do that. We took a back road, which was kind of dirty and it's not a pleasant road, but you can uh, find your way to the station in like maximum 10 minutes from the center of the town. Because that road that we came from was awful. 
uh, we are not now trying to find another one and I guess this is uh, an alternative one which uh, goes through a tunnel and even if it's a little bit steep I guess I prefer this one just because it's very short so we don't have to go back to that awful awful road it's kind of interesting right now to discover these roads it's like an adventure oh my god I don't know if I can do this it's very very claustrophobic look on the other side right now right there it's the town but can we do it would you do it let me know in the comments what would you do we decided to do it you okay yeah. okay let's go I'm not claustrophobic but uh, I'm worried about bugs and not to be dirty so these are my concerns not the claustrophobic part okay so yeah I survived I survived and now we are pretty quickly into town so if you take that road you are like in 30 seconds at the train station <laughs> I guess it is worth it and now I need something to eat we are going to stop at the first restaurant actually I saw only two restaurants and Travis is going to pick one and we are going to just eat something so we found this little restaurant it is named Pastelaria Avenida Sol it's right next to the Mercado Municipal and we saw a lot of people eating here so we chose this we ordered I ordered Aliera with um, chips with french fries and uh, Flavius ordered full English breakfast of course he always orders that when uh, he finds it in the menu hmm. good it's good it has this cream on top so it's it's kind of good so a few words about the food the Aliera had a specific taste to be frank, uh, it was the first time that I tasted Aliera, so I guess this is the taste of Aliera. In the menu said Gaelic Aliera, I don't know what it means. It was very good, very fatty, but the taste was, was good, so I would try another Aliera again because I think I like it. <laughs> For sure it was different from the um, sausage that uh, Flavius ate in the English breakfast. So I guess it was a genuine Aliera. I don't know because it was the first time that I tasted. The portions were gigantic. Everything came with an egg, which is uh, typical Portuguese. <laughs> and all in all, I had, um, we had a wonderful Portuguese meal. Very fatty, but very good. The prices were as you should expect in a place like this. So um, yeah, a good meal. Uh, actually, I was saying to Flavius that uh, in order to film these videos, we have to sacrifice ourselves and eat in these places so we can uh, film and talk about it. So Flavius, uh, I think he's finally uh, starting to see the benefits of this uh, channel. At least he's eating a lot of Portuguese food. I also wanted to film the Junta de Freguesia. I think Junta de Freguesia, along with the Igreja Matriz, are the things that you are going to find in any Portuguese town and they are beautiful in itself the architecture is beautiful even if this construction for example it's new they add just a little bit of that Portuguese charm like uh, azulejos or the flags of the junta and different inscriptions so it's always something that you would want to see at least I want to see and when you visit a town and you review a town so to speak uh, you absolutely have to see Junta de Freguesia and Igreja Matriz and I just wanted to be in this video also right across Junta de Freguesia here uh, which also has a, a Centro Social, Centro Cultural e Social João de Deus Deus, João de Deus, I think it's pronounced. Also, it has a restaurante, João de Deus, 
right across Junta de Fegzia. And uh, it is surrounded by hills and houses and it's a peaceful place. I have a beautiful view over the hills. Also, I think it's a good place to talk a little bit about the town, about my impression about the town. The town isn't um, my favorite. My favorite remains uh, Bolichem and Alte. These are the two, my favorite towns that are not um, right across the, the ocean. So they are a little bit inland. But Sao Bartolomeu de Messinas has his charms, definitely has his charms. He is very spread, like the Portuguese uh, villages are spread to the hills and it's not a compact village. But I like the fact that this is where I can sense that there are a lot of uh, Portuguese people who live here. I read on the internet that there is uh, also an expat community here pretty strong and at the restaurant I saw some uh, expats people who are talking English that uh, were sitting at the restaurant so I think there are expats here as well but uh, you can see the Portuguese people and I come to appreciate understand and seek the company of locals the more time you spend in Portugal the more you understand the culture and it's it is growing on you and you want to be around those people more than you want to be around the uh, expats at least this is our case and this is the main take for me from this town that uh, it's not so touristy as the others so this is what i like it it's not uh, much to see or to visit here apart from what you saw in the video maybe i uh, missed something please leave it in the comments but i would say that it definitely worth it.